So this is another episode of Mythbusters, Busters, Busters. And I have a very important question to ask you. Where do we place the Hulk on the FFMI? Because if it's over 25... Don't be ridiculous. Merchandise. Merch. Buy my merch. And so a quick message to the fan people threatened by the information on this channel. Your feelings don't debunk science. And a quick message to the fitness personalities also threatened by this channel. Your business model doesn't debunk science. And so what is the FFMI for people that may not know? Well, essentially it was a study in 1995 around body composition, or if you like, a reference of how yoked you are. And so you enter your information into a formula and it gives you a number. And so people on YouTube will use this to say if you're over 25, these people are not natty, not natty. And so people who use the FFMI to accuse people of being on juicy vitamins are being as silly as the people they're accusing. That is a twist ending. I channeled my inner Tarantino with that sentence. And I'm going to bring normality to this hot mess of the FFMI by referencing Greg Knuckles and also Eric Helmsman, who are steering the ship for common sense when it comes to this issue. Come on, that was a pretty good pun. The researchers who conducted the study themselves said that this study should not be used as the gold standard for determining natty status. It should be more of an initial screening type process where further work is needed based upon it. These findings must be regarded as preliminary and subject to several possible methodological limitations. Yeah, that. And so instantly you can start to see how people on YouTube who use the FFMI so definitively to determine natty or not status is perhaps not the right way to go. And so I want to be clear, I have no problem with people making videos about this topic. In fact, those videos are highly valuable as they help consumers understand realistic and unrealistic body images. And in many cases, I agree with the conclusions that people make. Even Kenny is quite good at doing that. That was, that was stuck in my throat, that sentence. It did, it did not want to come out. What I strongly disagree with is the use of this FFMI as a definitive way of classing people as natty or not. It's just pure nonsense, not natty. And so as a quick overview, not only is the research so severely flawed in itself, but the application of this natty limit, this definitive natty limit with no nuance or variability allowed, this set in stone number, can be extremely damaging to people who are accused of this based on this number. In fact, this study is so problematic it's super problematic. And the other problem with this whole concept is as much as we can know from training experience and knowledge that people may be tricking the system. For example, if you have someone who's in their early 20s, who's only been lifting for a few years, who's deadlifting over 600 pounds and is ripped with large muscles, for sure, we can know that something funky is going on. But unless you have hard evidence, again, it can be really problematic to actually accuse people. And so I'm going to reference a great article by Greg Knuckles. And instantly, this is what he has to say about the idea of a natty limit. In fact, I think proposing a limit is wrongheaded in the first place, since human traits tend to be normally distributed. That's why I've always addressed this question probabilistically. That was easy for me to say. Instead of using black and white terms, probability assessment isn't as exciting as simplistic and wrong black and white thinking, but it's the more rigorous and intellectually honest way to approach this question. Again, the idea of absolutes, black and white statements does not encompass the variability involved with humans, with the way our body physiology reacts to training and nutrition. There's a lot more to it than set in stone numbers. And so the first limitation I'm going to tell you is that body fat percentage, which was a key basis of this study for the participants, was attained by looking at photographs. They eyeballed photographs to determine body fat percentage for certain participants. Natty, not natty, au naturel, unnatural, spinach. Our calculations for the Mr. America winners are based on body fat estimates from blinded examination of several photographs of the individual. These methods are certainly prone to a degree of error. You don't say. You'd be totally entitled to disregard this section of the study entirely as it doesn't live up to literally any reasonable scientific standards. Natty. 
And then in addition, within the study, non-users were determined by an interview process and then urine samples, which is highly problematic. For example, an interview as a data collection method for something like this has a huge amount of limits. And in addition, if someone, someone was a user, but they were not on their current cycle, it could not show up in a urine test, which of course is not the strictest type of test we have for these chemicals. But of course, this was decades ago. Now we have far more rigorous types of tests. And so what I'm going to do now is project information from Greg Knuckles to you. I'm not going to give you all the information in his article because I can't really do justice to it in video form. It really is something you have to read because he goes into great depth into the huge flaws and limitations in this study. First one is the participants. We offered $60 for a confidential interview to any male aged 16 years or older who had lifted weights for at least two years. So the minimum requirement was at least two years of lifting. Here's the problem as Knuckle says. You'd want to make sure your subjects are actually at least near their own genetic ceiling. So if you're looking into something like this natty status, taking people who've only been training for two years, for example, now some participants would have been more than that, but the requirement, the entry requirements were two years. So for sure, it's fair to say that some people will, will be lesser trained. So instantly you have a spectrum of participants with variability instantly that alters how we can extrapolate results. And so if you're taking people who've only trained for a few years and are not near their genetic potential, then of course it would be highly problematic to determine how much muscle they can grow naturally when they've not had the time to do that. And then again, we go to the sample size of 74 participants. And this is what Knuckles says. If you're designing a study to assess the limits of any human trait, you'd better make sure your sample size is larger than 74 individuals. In short, if you want to know how jacked someone can possibly get without pharmaceuticals, you're going to need more than 74 subjects, regardless of who those subjects are. And again, the researchers acknowledge this. They acknowledge the problems with their sample size. Natty not natty. The researchers knew that their data weren't sufficient to assume anyone with an FFMI of 25 plus was automatically on the juicy vitamins. They proposed that FFMI should work as nothing more than initial screen. If someone has a really high FFMI, that just means there may be sufficient reason to do a blood or urine test for the juicy vitamins. And another point that Knuckles makes is there was a not there was a natty person in the study who was above 25. And therefore, due to this anomaly, the researchers then created a new cutoff level based on a correction. However, the researchers acknowledged that the correction, they, that they were unhappy with the correction they made in the research. Essentially, there are so many problems. It's endless with this study. And then there's a brilliant article by Dr. Eric Helms in the in Alan, Alan Aragon Scientific Review, where he again discusses the history of pharmaceutical use in bodybuilding. And again, it highly pours question on the content of the research in this FFMI, which says that, that within a certain date, these people were natural, when actually Eric Helms shows how that's an extremely flawed chronological timeline. There are so many problems with this research. It's not, it's not nitpicking. It smacks you in the face. And if you want the real depth, go and read the articles I've talked about. And so I very clearly want to say that the FFMI is not the indicator for natty status. We need to stop using that. We need to put it to bed. And so I'm James Linker. I'll see you soon.